Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours through Christ our Lord. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Corb Lutheran Church. Each day, uh, Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to dwelling with you in the Word. And today is May 27th. It's a Thursday. And we're going to continue our walk with the Christ in our home devotional booklet and using the scripture that it provides so that we can do some dwelling in the Word. Just a quick announcement, uh, just to um, let you know, it's hard to believe that the pandemic you know, began 2020 in March, basically. And we have been providing daily devotions Monday through Saturday for the last 14 months. And we have had, it's been an honor and it's also been a, a wonderful experience for me. And I know for Pastor Joanna, as we've dwelled in God's word together, uh, what an enriching way. Part of this for us was just a way to keep going, to keep reaching out, remind ourselves that even though the church doors had to be closed, that the church is never closed, that we're always open. And the other was just to demonstrate uh, one way for each of us to learn how to dwell in God's Word. And so this is a practice that's an ancient one, but we wanted to share that and demonstrate it. And we, we feel like we've done a, um, together, all of us have done a great job with that. Um, so beginning in June, as we start to get back into a different mode now that we're returning to church, um, Pastor Joanna Gregg and I are going to just do the Wednesdays now. We're going to do midweek dwelling in, in the Word um, and we're going to encourage you to continue this practice on your own. And don't forget, uh, there's also uh, the July copies, July, August, and September copies of, of Christ in Our Home are still available, or, or newly available, so you can get those when it's time. And one more thing, uh, beginning in June on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, Pastor Joanne and I uh, are going to do a pastor's class. We're going to call it Two Pastors, Ten Books in Ten Weeks. And each of us has just pulled a few books off of our bookshelves, and we're going to uh, do a 30-minute uh, video that talks about uh, just what we experience in those, and maybe have some Q&A. It'll be a Zoom, and look, for, look to that. Let us now dwell in the Word. Today is Romans 8, verses 1 through 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that just the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So as you dwell on this passage, what jumps out at you? What questions might it raise? What nudge might you feel? What verse jumps out at you? For me, this uh, verse 2 jumped out at me. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set you free. Now, Romans is a wonderful book, and I'd encourage you just to read the whole thing as you go back and look at this. But this passage particularly helps me understand how our life in Christ affects us. It's more um, of an orientation towards life than a disorientation and not knowing direction than a specific set of rules. Uh, it's more of a connection to something that's true think of like a vine and the branches. And so also because I haven't eaten breakfast yet, I was thinking about food and, and maybe as a, as a way to illustrate this passage. Um, when I was in my teenage years, especially when going through a growth spurt, you know, food was something to consume. Uh, quantity was the key. And my poor, my, my poor mother, she had three boys and a girl, all within five years of age. Um, and when we were all going through the teenage years, it was tough. She could cook and go to the store, and I can just remember all the food that we went through. Um, I didn't think twice about eating a whole pizza or several quarter pounders of cheese. I worked at McDonald's. Even had a quarter pounder cheese eating uh, contest once, and I won it. It was five of them. Uh, my, metabolism, my metabolism was so high that it would often uh, work off those calories, much to my jealous surprise from the perspective of 40-plus years looking back. I don't think I can do that today. But now I appreciate flavor in food, quality over quantity. Even presentation brings pleasure sometimes. 
and I'd prefer company over eating alone. Meals have changed. So this verse, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. You know, to connect and dwell using today's passage, my teenage view of food was kind of driven by this animalistic need to eat. And, uh, and likely it's because the growing body needed it too. I was feeding my hunger. And yet my older and wiser, um, and hopefully not too much wider, and more aged view of food is driven now by appreciation and even gratitude. I'm free now to eat better because I know that better will promote health. And I'm now feeding my health. And when I'm feeding my health, I'm freer to do things in my life that I couldn't do if I were not so healthy. And maybe similarly so with faith and being led by the Spirit, it sets us free not having to spend all of our time worrying about death or the afterlife or if we're worthy. But the spirit in us is about life. It's about everlasting life that begins in our baptism. And it's about worth, that we work from worth. We work from abundance and not from scarcity. Another illustration maybe, have you ever been on a trip and been lost? I've done it a couple of times, one hiking in the mountains and also just driving. Um, or maybe um, every step or every mile driven was almost painful because you didn't know if you're on the right path. Or if you have to take a fork in the load, you didn't know if it was the right or the left fork that you need to take. Well, I had this happen uh, when I was, uh, when it was early in the use of GPS, you know, it was on our phones and it was okay, but um, phone reception was still a little spotty and I might lose my signal, especially when I was in the mountains for a while, North Carolina. So there's this one time I was in a rural stretch of the mountains of North Carolina. I was on my way to a meeting at, at Luther Rock. Um, I had about 20 more miles to go. It was one of the first times I'd been there in a while, so I didn't know my way. Um, and I was out in the middle of, felt like uh, nowhere. It was kind of a rural part. And I had about 20 miles to go, several more turns that were important to take. And then my cell phone just goes off. It stopped. I was frustrated. I was kind of scared. I was worried about being late for the meeting. And then after a while I thought, what if I never find my way out of here? And then finally I realized, oh, I've got a uh, map in my glove box, map box. I don't know what you call it now, but I had a map and I was able to use it. But I was concerned, you know. So this verse, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. And so in connection with today's passage, my state of feeling lost is like living without the spirit or the GPS. It can be full of angst or worry or uncertainty, but having a sure way to find my way, especially when I'm in a wilderness area or I don't know my directions, it provides confidence and peace and a sense of gratitude. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. You know, God's spirit in us is a gift to enable us to grow and mature and to help us live for health and not just focus on our hunger because God provides. It goes on to say in verse five, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So God's blessings and peace to you this day as you seek to set your mind on the things of the Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of this new day and for the gift of the seasons of the year. But help us to know that you're with us always in spirit and your spirit is a part of our journey. Amen. Hey, grace and peace.